Bitcoin. Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency. Bitcoin. It ain't going cheap, though. Instead, you distribute many, many copies of this ledger around the world. Big industry around Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Bitcoin is, is better than currency in it. Uh, you don't have to ha be... Hello and welcome. Now this right here is my Bitcoin note. And this video is about putting one of these together. To begin with, you're going to need a few things. I recommend picking up a kit like this. It's going to include a good 80% of what you want and those things are as follows. Cables, heat sinks, a micro SD card and reader, a power bank and Raspberry Pi case, and of course, most importantly, the Raspberry Pi itself. Oh, and a little ditty fan. You'll also want to pick yourself up an external 2.5 hard drive enclosure and a 1TB SSD. Now you're also going to want an Ethernet cable, which I'd imagine everyone has one lying around somewhere, but I have a surplus now, so I'll just be making my own. Right, so now we're ready to get started. Get that pie out of the box and put it to the side. The first thing I've chosen to do is put the heat sinks on. It's not difficult, plastic bit peels off, heat sinks stick on. Okay, quick pause. I've only just noticed while editing that those heat sinks aren't all going the same direction. Uh, trust me, it annoys me more than it annoys you. Now that they're on the chips, let's get this bad boy into the case. Now every case is going to be different, so it's up to you to figure out how it all fits together. Also, don't be a prat like me and forget the fan. If you're not sure what connectors to plug the fan into, have a look at the guide that came with the kit. If you didn't get a guide, I don't know man, Google it.
Okay, now it's all together, you're going to want to get your hard drive enclosure and enclose your SSD. Now I'm sorry about the bad angle here, just make sure you put it in the right way. Now you should have this USB connector cable with your enclosure. So just plug it both into the case and the Raspberry Pi. I also decided to try and do a bit of cable management here. I, uh, I just opted for an elastic band. Next, it's a good idea to connect the power cable. The kit I bought actually came with this cool little switch. And like I said, power cable, not HDMI, which you can see me mistaking it for here. Again, I'm a pro. Oh look, there I am playing with the switch. It also might be a good idea to secure the Raspberry Pi to the external drive. Hello, me again. Just popped in to say that you're going to see me use sticky Velcro here. Uh, as it turns out, it wasn't actually strong enough, so I ended up using a different material. Uh, you may have noticed it in a clip earlier on, so but yeah, just so you know, this didn't actually work this part. Hey, now that's looking good. And don't forget to add the finishing touches. But please don't block the fan with a sticker. Okay, now grab your micro SD card and card reader. Now there's plenty of different designs of these, but I'd like to think most people can work out how to work it.
Right, now plug it into your computer and navigate to mynobtc.com and go to the download section. Here you'll find all the relevant downloads for whatever hardware you're using. There's also a little handy guide you can use as well. Now I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4, so I'll grab that file and wait for it to download. Once it's downloaded, you're going to want to mount it onto your micro SD card. And there's plenty of programs that can do that, but I'm going to be using Rufus. Now it's already selected my micro SD card and all I'm going to do is select the MyNode ISO image and click start. Word of warning though, doing this will wipe everything that's on your drive or SD card. So don't do it on something you want to lose. But now simply wait for it to finish its job. Okay, now that that's done, bring it back over to your Raspberry Pi and stick it in. Now we just need to connect it to our network. Like I said before, I've made my own Ethernet cable and I've already connected it to my patch pad. You really don't need a setup like this for this to work. You'll be fine just plugging it into the back of your router. Now let's just get it powered. Once everything is connected, head over to your PC and go to mynode.local or just connect to its own. From here on, you can log into your node with the default credentials and you'll be greeted by this message telling you to format the drive. Like with the micro SD card, this will completely destroy everything already on it. But once it's formatted, you'll also be asked to enter your product key. This is because there is also a paid version of my node, but I'm a cheap cunt, so I'll be using the free version. Once we're in, the very first thing I'm going to do is change the password. So you can go get fucked, hackers. Now it did take a while for this to actually kick in for me, but eventually it should start syncing you up with the Bitcoin blockchain. Basically it's just downloading every single block which contains every single transaction that's ever taken place. This can and probably will take up to several days, because as of right now, as I'm filming this, the blockchain is over 207 gigabytes in size. So just wait, it will get there eventually. 
And once that's done, you're free to start playing around. This involves things such as setting up your own Electrum server so you can connect your Electrum wallet to your own personal node. Uh, you can set up the Lightning wallet, have Block Explorer, and more. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. If you didn't like the video, hit the dislike button and let me know in the comments why.